So yeah, when people are looking at uh, schools, I would say one of the most common mistakes is they they make their pick based on uh, geography. And I say this because what you, what you're in, it's just almost always right when I go teach now. You know, um, the majority of the students are from the area that I'm teaching in, right? Mm-hmm. At least you know close. And the reason I say it's a mistake is because the the curriculums can widely vary um, between chiropractic schools. Um, Even if the class load doesn't vary or the subject matter doesn't vary, how those classes are taught can vary quite a bit. Right. Right. Uh, One thing to check out is who are some chiropractors? You know, so uh, ideally, you know, maybe have an opportunity to go shadow some chiropractors. Right. Um, And learn at least a few different houses, maybe at least three or four offices and different uh, would be idea. Uh, if you can do more, great. Uh, by the way, this is not something that I did, so I'm recommending something that uh, I got I got kind of lucky with. Um, I did choose California because I wanted to be back in California because I'm a California kid. There was three schools there, um, one in Southern California, two in Northern California, and then I made my choice based on the energy of being at those campuses, um, which is one way to do it, and I think there's more. Um, One of the questions that you're going to come about um, is some will say that they are more evidence based. Right. Um, However, the evidence based is an illusion. And I will tell you right now, straight up evidence based is illusion. When they say evidence based, it means that they look for medical acceptance. Okay, Mm -hmm. meaning that they highly value the opinion of the medical doctor. They often end up being more insurance based models because an insurance-based model is in more relationship with medicine because of the way that you need to diagnose and or treat people. Um, And so evidence-based is just looking more at medical science, but it is no more evidence-based than any of the other schools. So I wanna put that out right now, and I would be willing to talk to any president from any of these schools that claim that they are quote unquote evidence-based in full confidence that I can have a good conversation with them. So with that said, um, just one know that a lot of people like to pitch that and it doesn't mean shit. So from there, you wanna look at um, what type of chiropractors are being produced? What type of offices are they creating? What's their success? Because to me, you know, another another thing that people wanna claim their success on as a chiropractic school is their board um, pass rates. So here's another thing to understand about national boards. National boards is a a series of tests that are pretty difficult um, that are uh, required for you to get your license. Now, what is taught in those national boards, especially at the part one, which covers the most ground, right? So uh, part one is six categories and it spans content that you learn for almost two years, right? So it's a lot of classes that is basically, um, you know, getting grouped then into six categories that um, requires, you know, again, a good, either a good amount of study or a good amount of intelligence and, and both, I imagine. Um, and uh, it has nothing to do with chiropractic, right? Uh, meaning that what, what you'll, I mean, some of it, and I just think there is a spinal anatomy class. I was going to say, yeah. So, you know, there's a physiology, say so there's a spinal anatomy, but I'm saying to the, so you say physiology, but to the depth that you're, that you're getting tested on the physiology, it has nothing to do with your actual interaction with a client on table, right? And you say spinal anatomy, yes. And then to the depth that you're getting tested on spinal anatomy, is going far beyond um, anything that would actually apply as a chiropractor. Um, and then there's biochemistry and you know, microbiology and some other ones. Right. So um, what I'm saying is um, it's possible that you that you crush, right? You can, I think, I think 800, 800 is a top score on your boards, right? It's possible that you get a 780, right? Or 750 or higher on all your boards, right? And you only need a 350 pass. And you're a horrible chiropractor. So that's what I'm saying. So don't don't hang your hat on. Okay, we have awesome uh, pass board rates. Um, we're evidence based. Um, what I would be looking at is this is about to be somewhere that I'm going to spend the next three to four years of my life. Is this somewhere where I feel like I'm in synergy with the school? 
that I'm in synergy with the students that are here. Because you're spending spend most of your time with the students, right? So what's the vibe on campus? Is this somewhere that I want to learn? Is this somewhere that I feel inspired? Is this somewhere where like curiosity and wonder is bubbling up in me? Is this somewhere that I'm falling in love with? So I do think it's important to actually go walk the halls, go walk the grounds, go talk to people. You know, because is this someone? Is there someone that's using similar language to you know how I communicate? Is this someone that's going to acknowledge my needs? Is this some someone that really cares about me and my growth, rather than just being another person in the seats that's paying me tuition? And I think you know, from conversations and communication and knowing yourself, you can you can start to discover a lot of that. Um, and so ideally, yeah, I would say ideally have three schools that you want to tour, um, ideally potentially in different, uh, geographical locations. Um, and then also asking mentors, right? So, um, if you have a chiropractor that you love and appreciate and ask them where they went and ask them where they recommend, uh, because they're probably going to help steer you closer into the right direction. No doubt.